autonomy building, productivity building, and stop trying to micromanage our affairs. I think it can be confusing for Canadians because they see these federal programs, it's money for people in your jurisdiction, and perhaps it's hard to understand why you're not so interested in it. It's pretty um, easy to understand. I mean, I on the Pharmacare program, we have a 5,000 drug plan. They wanted to have a two drug plan. We have a dental program that covers 500,000 people, and we're not going to roll that up for a program that's only existed for five minutes. This is the, what they do all the time, is that they offer a tiny bit of money and then make the provinces uh, co cover the, the lion's share of the bill. Well, we've got a program. If they want to help us, rather than duplicate administration so that more dollars actually get to people, they should be working with us rather than trying to create new programs that go against, I think, uh, the, the programs we've already put in place. Indigenous leaders are saying they only get 10 minutes to speak up there and that's not enough. What would you say to them? We have two and a half hours booked with them. We're staying here until 1.30. I think in previous um, COP meetings, we, we or COP meetings, we, we've had a similar amount of time. So I'm looking forward to having a, a very long, robust conversation with them. Premier Bell was just telling us that he wants some provinces to take more yes. as asylum seekers. Is that something Alberta is interested in? I can tell you, Alberta has uh, is now the destination for 22% of newcomers to Canada, even though we're only 12% of the population. So I would say that uh, both Quebec and Alberta share an interest in having the federal government support those asylum seekers so that we can provide the social services, provide the integration, provide the language training. And um, you know, I've watched that uh, Minister, uh, the Premier Legault has had some success in getting the federal government to meet his commitment. We would like them to meet the same commitment in Alberta. So you'd like also to get a check from the federal government? Look, we had 200,000 people uh, come into Alberta last year and 120,000 or so came from uh, from abroad. We have been the destination point for, the, for a large number of Ukrainian evacuees. And we think that the federal government should meet its responsibility as they're bringing more people in than they had committed to in the past. They're even acknowledging that we're having a housing crisis, an affordability crisis, and a crisis of pressure on all of our social programs as a result. So yes, they should be paying for the, the cost of that. Are you Maybe preparing your case ahead. to, you know, engage in talks with Ottawa well, about I, that? Look, I, I, we have written several letters asking for, at, at least in our province, we have a pathway to permanent immigration, and we have asked for a larger number of provincial nominees like Quebec. Quebec, I believe, chooses 55% of their economic uh, immigrants. We would like to have the same uh, arrangement as Quebec, because that is the perfect model. If you have somebody who comes, they get integrated, they learn the language, they have a job, they want to stay part of the community, we should have a, an easier pathway for them to become permanent. And the feds have uh, refused our request. We've been asked for it to be increased to 20,000 and they actually reduced this this year so we're very disappointed with that but in addition we, we need more settlement dollars to make sure that people have a seamless entry into our economy. Now that the U.S. relations were already, were already on, on the agenda, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the tone of those conversations will change at all given um, the tragic events over the weekend. Uh, I think everybody's very concerned. We, When you see uh, an attempted assassination and that kind of political violence, there's it's unacceptable. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're beginning to see that they recognize that things have gone too far. Uh, the, the way in which conservative politicians have been characterized is outrageous. And that is, I think, led to the culture that we've seen in the U.S. And I certainly hope that uh, some of the progressive politicians here are careful of their language because they've been talking about conservative politicians in the same way. And they need to dial it down. Like what? Have you not looked at uh, uh, the headlines about how Pierre Polyev is described as dangerous? How the leader of the opposition in Alberta has described me as dangerous? When you start using that kind of rhetoric, that ends up creating an elevated risk for all of us. And I think we have to be very mindful that we can have a disagreement in politics, but we have to stick to the issues. This is what I love about this table, actually, is that we come from different political perspectives. And we're all able to get along and find areas of agreement. You're a pretty forceful speaker yourself, Premier Smith. And I wonder if you've had, as you've asked others to take some reflection, have you had any reflection about your own reverend? I always stay focused on issues and focused on uh, finding the ways that we can debate the issues. And I think it should be focused on issues. I think when you start name calling and you start calling uh, and start describing people in a way that um, that uh, is inappropriate and creates a, a dangerous environment, I think people have to be self-reflective. Thanks, everybody. Like,